Japan's debt problem. Visualized. At the end of 2012, Japan's central government was 997 trillion yen in debt. That's more than 200% of GDP and more than $80,000 per capita. There's little chance of it ever being paid back. And unfortunately, things are about to get a whole lot worse. In order to understand why, let's look at how the government accumulates debt in the first place. Each year, the government receives money from households and corporations in the form of taxes and other revenues. It then spends that money in the economy on public services and other commitments. If the government wants to spend more money than its revenues, it has to borrow the difference. It does this by issuing debt securities, IOUs. Investors buy them, the government gets the money it needs, and investors receive interest. But when the outstanding debt gets too large, investors start to worry that they won't get their money back. This is where the central bank comes in. The central bank lowers interest rates, which basically means that it prints money until interest rates hit its target. Satisfied that their investments are safe, investors keep buying government IOUs, which means that the government gets to keep spending more than it earns. Sounds great, right? Well, there's a catch. Over time, continual interest rate suppression and money printing sets up an inescapable trap. Here's how it works. Imagine the government's outstanding debt as a big box of fixed height. Then each year it has to pay a small slice of the box in interest. You can think of this as a tray that it has to fill with incoming funds. In normal circumstances, tax revenues fill the interest expense tray and go a long way towards funding other expenditures. Then investors fund what's left. Now when the central bank lowers interest rates, the tray becomes shallower. This makes it easier for the government to fill the tray with its core revenue stream, allowing it to grow its other expenditures. Over time, the interest expense tray gets shallower and wider, and expenditures grow substantially. Now even a small increase in the average debt cost, the height of the tray, increases the interest expense to the extent that it takes up all of the tax revenue. And when it does, the government has to borrow everything it spends. This only widens the interest expense tray. Investors catch on and sell their bonds, raising interest rates further. And soon enough, the government finds that its core revenue stream meets only a fraction of its interest liability. Even the printing press can't help now. If the central bank tries to grow tax revenues, investors sell their bonds to account for inflation. This pushes up average debt costs such that the total interest expense rises faster than tax revenues. So in the end, the situation remains the same. And the government inevitably defaults. So here's where Japan fits into this framework. At the end of the 2012 fiscal year, Japan's debt was 23 times revenues. So let's look at this in terms of our tray analogy. This means that a 1% increase in the average debt cost increases the overall interest expense by 23% of tax revenues. Now 23% of tax revenues are already being spent on interest each year. So the average debt cost is only about 3% away from the point at which interest consumes the entire tax revenue. So it all comes down to this. Can the government keep its debt cost from rising to 4%? Well, in order to answer this question, it's important to distinguish between Japanese investors and foreign investors. Let's start with Japanese investors. The last 20 years have been very challenging for them, since almost all prices have been going down. The exception has been government bonds. So as you can imagine, a large part of local investable funds are already invested in them. This means that new investable funds would have to buy the government's new bonds. 
Since investors represent households and corporations, these new funds would have to come from their new savings. The problem is that new savings are declining. The population is aging, so households are more likely to draw down upon savings than create them. And the balance of trade is deteriorating, making it difficult for corporations to generate profits. Basically, the new savings of households and corporations are less than what the government needs to borrow. So the only option is for foreign investors to get involved. But they're used to receiving higher rates of return. So as external investors fund more and more of the government's deficit, the average debt cost may well rise to the critical level of 4%. But it gets worse. The Bank of Japan recently started targeting 2% inflation. The problem with this is that Japanese investors had come to view falling consumer prices, deflation, as real return. So when consumer prices fell by 1% per year and they got a nominal yield of 1%, they called it a 2% real yield. But the Bank of Japan's new policy is going to flip the polarity of this calculation. So even to get back to where they were, investors will have to charge the government a nominal rate of 4%. Combine this with Japan's increasing reliance on external capital, and you can see just how easily the average debt cost could breach the critical level of 4%. And once that happens, it's game over.